Нет. Да. Бабушка. That's all I know. In Russian. Russian hat today. So I wanted to make this video real quick for you guys. You soul family out there, anyone new? What's up? How are y'all doing? It's about UFOs and the things we see flying around in the sky at night or the daytime. Uh, many of my friends think they're demons. They think they're um, coming from inside Sedona over here or over there out of that vortex. A lot of people don't believe in UFOs. But I can tell you right now that I've had experiences with them in the handfuls, probably dozens of them. And I was thinking, what if I died today and I didn't get this stuff off my chest and shared it with the world and with other people who've had paranormal, out of worldly experiences, I wanna share it with you. These, that, this story, these stories I'm about to start sharing are for you, the ones who've had paranormal experiences that don't make any sense and especially the people who never felt like they blend in here or can and can even be part of this society they've always felt weird which is okay that means that you're a wizard which is actually pretty badass or you're a witch one of the two or a mystic shaman or you just don't give a shit which is okay too it's totally okay to not give a crap and not fall into people's paradigms or programs of how you should live. So I'm going to make this video pretty quick as I'm rolling past these vortexes, feeling the energy out here in Shedonia, Arizona. So my first UFO sighting I can recall, consciously awake, laying on a trampoline near Mount Shasta in a little town where I'm from, I seen a ball of metal probably about the size of like a small shed or like a you know sprinter van or something like that an ambulance and it was going across the sky quicker than anything I've ever seen travel before way quicker than any jet but I was only like five years old and me and my cousin we thought to ourselves that was weird you know but we didn't really think too much of it because we were only five years old so a year maybe before or after that, I can't remember, my mom always had me with babysitters because she was a wild cat. She liked the party, she was an artist, and she also didn't give a shit what people thought about her. And she was always kicking it. So she, I would always be at a daycare with one of her friends. And I was with the, her friend Melody. I still remember her name. She was a Native American lady. And we're in her car driving through Oregon, which is just timberline trees like forever 100 feet on both sides of you that's all you can see on these straightaway roads and we seen a big triangle go by she said she thought it was a bird it could have been i mean that that would have been a big bird though like the size of a cessna so that was my second paranormal encounter and that's excluding my lucid dreams i had as a kid I had a lot of uh dreams where I can control everything in them and a lot of children do but they lose it because their family tells them oh that's just your imagination you know oh it's just a nightmare it's just a dream I, I could definitely beg to differ on that one I believe that the dream world is actually the spirit world where we go when we die basically when we leave our human body container our avatar that's where we go and I have a lot of UFO encounters and angelic, uh, higher dimensional being encounters also in the spirit realm, what humans call the dream realm. And basically what I'm trying to make this video is to tell you guys like there's a lot more to life than what we're shown and what we're told. Oh man, it costs money to go up in here, really? Money that go on my own property, on my own planet. That's fuck. No way I'm gonna pay. Oh. 
fuck that. I'm out of here. They got a little pay booth. So yeah, I I have a what what most people would call your phone counters weekly, and you know, if I die all of a sudden, you probably know why, because I'm disclosing this stuff. But a lot of people are already disclosing it, so I might as well come forward with what's happened to me and my experiences, and it, I hopefully it can help someone or anybody that's struggling with. Uh, demonic possession entities in the room scratching them noises going on in your house uh lights in the sky trust me they're here and that's part of the reason why i moved to sedona arizona because it's known as a vortex which they're all over the planet and it's a hot spot for ufos i was actually moving to austin texas for like the third time and my buddy told me to stay here in sedona because covid hit and i was like that's a good idea stay in a rural area where everyone has guns and uh but i'm finally leaving now because i realize i belong in the tropics but i'll tell you guys all about that stuff later on stick on the ufos so my major ufo encounter that changed my life happened near um this is my third encounter happened in redmond washington um near microsoft so I lived next to the Microsoft campus, probably five minutes away. And we just came back from a super beautiful hike up into the Kwame Falls. It was beautiful. We just got lost out in the Cascades. Yeah, Arizona. This place is so beautiful. I can't get over it. <laughs> it's so beautiful. And uh, anyway, so I get home, right? It's like, you know, this time of day, almost 5 p.m. summer, 6 p.m. Oh, some Canadian. Oh, damn. I'm crazy out here. And uh, I heard a helicopter heading towards the property. And uh, it wasn't an ordinary helicopter. It was literally shaking the ground and causing my lungs to almost collapse. Like, I felt my whole... <gasps> like, it was that loud and that close. And I looked to where the sound was coming from. And here comes a black Apache helicopter blacked out i've never seen one black um and it was like a flat stealth bomber black and i'm looking at it because it's probably 20 feet above the tree line and i'm trying to see the pilot and he has five percent window tints hit the limo tint i'm like that's crazy that's odd usually you can see the little helmet guy in there and there's two seats in apache they have a camera radar thing above the propellers and they have missile launchers and machine guns on the wings and all kinds of stuff on it and it should have had blinking lights because the sun was starting to go down and the fda you gotta have blinking lights on your aircraft no matter what really and a writing on them there was no writing on it no blinking lights and the only light i saw on the helicopter was a steady red light on the front and i know what that was i was like that is infrared so i'm like what is it following so i look in front of this helicopter right and there's a blue orb, is what most people call it. Um, it looks like a ball of plasma. Literally like a liquid ball of light. And it's just rotating inside of itself. And um, that was about the size of, yeah, like a shed or an ambulance, a big ambulance. And it was floating like that. It wasn't going like the, the helicopter projectile flight. And then um, I looked in front of the blue orb because I saw an orange orb and the orange orb was already halfway cloaked. So it looked like a, have you ever took an orange apart and ate one slice of the orange? That's what it looked like, half. And half of it was clear, but you could see heat, like a heat signature. And then the orange disappeared completely and it was just a ball of heat floating towards the cascades. And that's, that's it all happened that fast. And I got a chance to actually get a witness. Uh, Mike, my mechanic, one of my first mechanics when I started Cars for Trees. Um, I yelled at him. I'm like, look in front of that helicopter. And he saw the ships too. And the blue orb was just pulsing, beautiful, brilliant blue light. It looked like a star literally floating right in front of a helicopter being chased or escorted through my backyard. I thought to myself, okay, that was kind of odd. It, it almost looked like it was being escorted out of town or something. 
or shoot out of the neighborhood, which happens a lot with the men in black. I have the black helicopters and black cars. There's a lot of crazy stuff that I'll, I'll try to disclose to some of you guys. I try not to talk about it too much because I know it's like outside of me and I need to focus on my inner reality, but this stuff needs to be talked about regardless, you know? So that shook me for life and that happened a while ago. And I've had encounters that almost blow that out of the water. Uh, I'll try to share as many of them as possible. Maybe I'll write them down so I can remember them and share them with people. So hopefully it can help you with your consciousness growth, expansion, and getting through this crazy thing that is called the Earth School life. And it, it, it's just it's so beautiful once you realize there's way more than we're being told and we're also being lied to. And I don't need to explain to you who's lying to you or who's trying to deceive you because you probably already know. Um, energy vampires, succubuses, incubuses. Ugh, I mean, man, demons. Like, yeah, they're here. They're, they're trying to suck your energy. And that's why it's so important to keep your vibration high. Keep your diet clean. Keep your room clean. Keep your mind clean. All of it. Drop the porn. Drop binge watching YouTube videos like this. Unless they're cool. And they're teaching you something and you're growing. I'm trying not to watch TV. I haven't had a TV for like 10 years. But um, yeah, that, that UFO encounter was insane. And it shakes me just sharing it with you. And if you like this, you like this kind of stuff, share it with your friends on the internet. Whoever helps it go viral, I'll send you a thousand bucks. PayPal. And you can make money just doing that. Boom. And, uh, you know, if you like this kind of content, subscribe to my channel. My name is Jojo GoFlow. I go by Joe, Jojo. My friends gave me that name. And um, it stuck. And uh, if you're new to my journey here, thank you for joining. And much love. And I'll share some more of that stuff with you later. I gotta go get some munchies. Have munchies. And that's why I live in Sedona, Arizona right now. I'm just gonna travel from vortex to vortex oh yeah quick little bonus vortex is in the usa if you want to go see a ufo tonight um and you live in washington state or oregon you could drive up to trout lake washington mount adams because they like to go around mountains and volcanoes these ships um i don't know what the hell they are um i i can explain to you in some more videos of what i think they are what i feel they are but it, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Like, it's all inside of us. It's all inside you. All the truth. We just got to stop thinking and tap into it. But Mount Adams is great. You'll see UFOs there for sure, 100%, if it's a clear night. Um, but they're everywhere. I've seen them in Portland, Seattle, Germany, Costa Rica, Peru is a really crazy one that you guys are going to love. My Peruvian uh, encounters. Um, seen them in Tel Aviv. Oh my god, the Tel Aviv UFO. Wow, that one's really cool. Australia. Australia is probably the coolest story. I might have to hire an animator for that one. I'll fight. But yeah, I'm going to start making a lot more videos soon because we're going to be hopefully launching a clothing company soon that helps raise money to plant fruit trees. We're still working on getting a thrift store upcycle center going. We've been trying for like 10 years to do that. Really hard work because we're selling people's junk to raise money to plant fruit trees. So it's kind of a weird business, but it's working out. But yeah, I like to share more of this stuff with you. And I'm really scattered brain right now because I got the munchies and just did an hour long colonic hydrotherapy. <sighs> but I feel good. Boop, boop. Mm. Love you guys. Peace in the Middle East. Ciao.